today I'm speaking on the subject, what is the Christian life? What is the Christian life? That's what I'm speaking. What is the Christian life? What is the Christian life? What is the Christian life? Number one, it is a life of faith. The Christian life is a life of faith. The Christian life is a life of faith. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So the Christian life is a life of faith. Is a life of what? Faith. Number two, it begins with faith. The Christian life begins with faith. That's why we are saying that it's a life of faith. It begins with faith. It begins with faith. It's a life of faith. It begins with faith. And Ephesians 2, 8, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is a gift of God. Listen, all of us, the, we became saved when somebody told us about Jesus. To use vice president's language, you and I were not there. When Jesus died, 2,000 years ago, you and I were not there. But somebody came and talked to us that somebody called, his name is Jesus. He once upon came on earth here and he died for your sins. And if you believe in him, you'll be saved. And you put your faith in him and you've been saved. So the Christian life begins with faith. Number three, it also ends with faith. It begins with faith and it ends with faith. So it's faith all the way. It begins with faith and it ends with faith. The Christian life is a life of faith. It begins with faith, it ends with faith. Romans 1, 16 to 17. Romans 1, 16 to 17. He says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, The just shall live by faith. Next week, I'll give you all the scripture references that talks about. We have four scripture references in the Bible that talks about the just shall live by faith. It repeats it four times. So that is the Christian life. It's faith from the beginning and faith to the end. Are you hearing me? Okay. Then I come to number four. Faith is a gift from God. Faith is a gift from God. The Christian life is a life of faith. It begins with faith and it ends with faith. And faith is a gift from God. That is the reason why you can never boast about salvation. Because everything about salvation was provided by God. All that you needed to do is to believe. 
everything. That's why the Bible says that salvation is a free gift. Because even the faith for you to believe in Christ was provided to you by God. Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. It's so it is God who gave you that gift, that faith to be saved. When the gospel was being preached, he gave you that faith. He convicted you. He gave you so that you trusted what was being said. Romans, give me the Romans one. He said, for by the grace of God given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. In accordance with the measure of faith. It means God gives everybody faith. And listen to me. If faith is Jesus talk about faith like a master seed, which is a small. So if faith is like this and it's given you, it is your duty to develop your faith. That's where the, the rubber meets the room. God gives everybody faith. Faith to believe in him. Faith to be saved. But after you have been given that faith, that measure of faith, it is your duty to develop that faith. And listen to me. I can pray for you, but I can't give you my faith. You and I know that nobody can give anybody your faith. You will teach your children, but your children need to develop their own faith. You can pray for them, you can do everything, but you can't give them your faith. That is why God hasn't got grandchildren and grandsons and granddaughters. Either you are a son or you are a daughter. Every one of us need to develop his own faith. So that brings me to my fifth point. God gives me faith as I feed on his word. God give me faith as I feed on his word. Everyone needs to develop faith because faith is very, very important and God wants us to live by faith. And everyone, when you feed on his word, then you get faith. That is how your faith will, will, will grow. Feeding on his word. In Romans chapter 10, verse 17, Romans 10, 17. And I want you to hear. It says, so then faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by what? Hearing. But it's not every hearing that brings faith. It's not every hearing. So in fact, Jesus warned us about what we hear. Because it is only hearing the word of God. It is only hearing what? The word of God that brings faith. So you can hear things that does not bring faith. And this is what is happening today. It's very, very important. I want you to listen. What we are doing, the, the reason why church service is very, very important is that you are working on your faith. Because as you come and you listen to the teachings of God's word, you are feeding your faith. That's why... The Bible makes us responsible what we hear. Because there are some things when you hear, it doesn't build faith. It rather takes away faith. It brings fear. Today, you see all the things on the internet. You go to the uh, TV, CNN, BBC, and you look at all the cases of coronavirus. The reason why I know coronavirus is a demonic attack on the church is that it prevents us from coming to church. And anything that prevents you from coming to church to build your faith is of the devil. It's of the devil. Look at all the, all the sicknesses that you've ever experienced. No sickness prevents you from coming to church except coronavirus. And the more you look at the cases rising, if you don't come to church, 
fear will grip you. And fear is opposite of faith. And the Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear. But the enemy knows that when he's able to replace faith with fear, then he can work with it. So, every day, you need to read the word to be able to help you so that you can get rid of fear. Because everything that is happening, everything on the media is to project fear, is to make us afraid. You hear the death tolls that is going on. You hear uh, people dying and everything. And it put fear in you. And fear has torment. Fear is the opposite of faith. Fear is the opposite of faith. So the devil wants to put fear because it is, that is the way he can work. God works with faith. The devil works with fear. So once the devil is able to take away faith from your heart and he replaces it with fear, it gives him the opportunity. It gives him the channel for him to work in your life. That's why it's very, very, very important. Faith comes by hearing God's word. And let me advise everyone of you. See, we are in an age that by God's grace, we have so many ways of listening to God's word. And I want to encourage you. Like those of you who use this uh, uh, iPad and who use this phone, we have even the Bible, that uh, audio Bible on, the, on, on, on your uh, iPad or on your uh, phone. Use it. One of the things I want to encourage before you go to bed, just put a, a, it on audio Bible and listen to some of the word of God before you sleep with it. Sleep with the word of God than sleeping with Nigerian film or, Bra or Brazil or those films that you people watch. It's very, very important. Always make it a habit. Before you sleep, just put your audio Bible on and listen. And at least something will enter into your, your head. Amen? It's very, very, make it a practice that before you sleep, you do, it will help you a lot. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. That's why you always must attend a church where it's a teaching church. Listen, when I watch all the things that are happening in the two, the conclusion I've come to, those people don't read the Bible. Because you cannot read the Bible consistently. I'm talking about consistent reading of the word of God. I'm not talking about haphazard. Once in a while you read it. Or when you are going to preach, you look for a sermon. Somebody says it's a pastor. And you look for something that will suit what. But if you consistently read the word as we were taught in our quiet time, there's no way you can continue to sin. It's impossible. It's impossible. I was telling people, you know, sometimes I meet people and they ask me, Pastor. Do you think you can stay alone? I say, what, why do you think that I can stay alone? Ah! I mean, what some of you are worried about me. I'm not worried at all because I know so much scripture. So much scripture is here and is here that it's impossible. Ah! I was telling the people at the distance, they say, 40 years ago, and I'm a boss, you are bad. I'm worse to cry at the boss. Well, sir, yet the yet the power back when po minim 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 forty years ago, and I'm here. So I don't know. You see, if you, you see, there's no way you can consistently read the Bible and sin. The Bible will keep you away from sin, or sin will keep you away from the Word of God. That's why it's very very important. We don't joke with God's word. So, number six. To grow my faith, the word of God is important. To grow my faith, the word of God is, must be a priority in my life. To grow my faith. It means you can't grow your faith outside God's word. Even though prayer 
is very, very important. But listen to me. Your prayer beca become wasteful. Your prayer become noise in the ears of God if it's not based on God's word. That's what he says that these people think that by their long saying and everything, because what are you going, going to take to God? He said, come to God with words. And it's not your own words. It's the words of God. So if you don't know the word of God, prayer doesn't become meaningful. So it is very, very important that the word of God must be a priority in your life every blessed day if you are going to grow in faith. Because God will never do anything outside his word. Anything that happened outside God's word is not God. It's not God. Because that's the way he had designed. I wish God had designed another way of, grow, of growing your faith. But he said it's the word. It's the word. It's the word that will grow your faith. Uh, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 to 23. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them. And health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it springs the issues of life. And then Colossians. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Let the word of Christ dwell in you. Listen, wait. Why does the Bible say let the word of Christ dwell in you? Because, you see listen to me. That's why some of you, li listen, some of you like going to churches where they talk about demons and they talk about witches and they talk about the more you hear about witches your faith will be in witches that's why i don't like talking so people come oh pal, i'm for ccc ah now me the witch here day i'm not in for witches so why should i uh, uh, dwell on witches and witches and beside that i know they are under my feet So you go, and then they say all kinds of, and so all those churches where they go, there's always fear in the people. In fact, they pray, but they don't have faith. So it's just noise that they are making, because the faith comes the word, by the word of God. By the word of God. It's, it's sad. Faith comes by the word of God. So Christ's word must be doer, and if you want faith, Christ's teaching. Look at Christ. Why? Because the Bible says Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. That's why I said, if you want to get, he is the beginning and the ending of our faith. So everything is wrapped up in Jesus. So the more you hear about Jesus, the more you read about Jesus, the more your faith is being built. Not about demons. So let us be Jesus focused, Jesus centered, Jesus focused. Amen. Amen. Give me the other scripture. And this words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between you, your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost, on your house, and on your what? Gates. So it means that God wanted the word of God to be everywhere. He told them. It must, be, it must be on your fridge. 
it means your house must be saturated. Everywhere you pass, you go left, you see the word. Because he wants the word of God to be part and parcel of our life. That is the way we grow faith. That's the way we grow faith. And I, I wish I can give you my faith, but I can't give you my faith. The only way you can grow your faith is by the word of God. And that's why we emphasize teaching is very, very important. That's why Jesus told the disciples, teach them. That's why he, he said, look, look, give me, uh, it's not in my, this thing, give me John 8, uh, for, give me John 8, 30, 31 and 32. Okay, then Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, if you abide in my way, you are what? You are what? So listen to me, listen. I want, I want, I want to really help you. This is Jesus. Because a disciple is a learner. So from this, it's not everybody that believed in Jesus is a disciple. Is that true? Because then Jesus said to those who believed in him. So these people have already believed in him. To become a disciple, you, already, you have to believe. If you don't believe in him, you don't become a disciple. But it's a process. But it is those who continue in his word. Then you become a disciple. Then 32. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall what? Make you free. It's the truth that brings freedom. And the, you see, there are a lot of people under bondage. They go to church, they're under bondage because their faith has not grown because they don't know the truth. So the truth has not set them free. I beg you. Let the word of God be primal in your life. Are you hearing me? Read it every day. Read it every day. Uh, this morning, I was looking for when we talk about faith, the Webster Dictionary, this is the way he talks, he defined faith. I was sure that even the Webster Dictionary defined it. It says, unquestioning belief, that does not require proof or evidence. He said, unquestioning belief, that does not require proof or evidence. But let me say this to you. You see, when you study the life of the Israelites, one of the things that the sin that they were always going through was the sin of idolatry. Worshipping idols. Why? Because all the nations around them, listen to me, all the nations around them was worshipping a God they could see, a God they could touch. All the nations around them. They were the only nation that was worshipping a God they couldn't see. So many times people come to them, ah, you say you have a God, show me. You say you have a God, show me. And then they are tempted to go and get something. Always. They want, you see, because faith is, is said that faith is unquestionably believe. You believe. But does not require any proof or evidence. You see, it is easy to believe something you can hold. It is easy, something you can touch, something you can see. That is why the charismatic churches and the prophet want always to give you something. Water, oil, this, this, because yes. But that is not faith. That is not faith. Listen, I was studying about the people that Jesus called great faith. And I was shocked. I was really shocked. Because if I was the one. The person I would have said he had a great faith was the woman with the issue of blood who came to Jesus and pressed her own way and touched the hem of Jesus' garment. And Jesus didn't say she has great faith. She said she has faith, but not great faith. All the people Jesus said there, because the woman has something that she used as a point of contact. So Jesus doesn't call that great faith. All the people that Jesus called great faith were people who didn't see anything, but they just believed his word. The man said, you just speak your word. 
they did not see anything, but they just believed the word. That is great. Believe. Believe what God says. What is faith? Faith is taking God at his word. Are you hearing me? And I want you to live here with that confidence that, look, you are a child of God. You believe in Jesus. You are a covenant child. Your life is in the hand of Jesus. Coronavirus does not detect you. Coronavirus cannot tell you whether you live or you die. The person that determines when you die and when you live is Jesus. He's the shepherd of our soul. He, he is the one that we have committed our life into his hands. We need to come to that place to believe. I was telling people, where are the three Hebrew children today? They say, oh, Cain, we are not careful to answer you. We are not careful to answer you. Yes, we know we can be banned. Yes. And, but what we are saying is that even if God doesn't deliver us, we have an unquestionable proof. We have an unquestionable proof that God is the Jehovah God and we will serve him. And so we won't bow to you. And they believed God and they trusted him. And God, look, Esther, he said, if I die, I die. Because if it's not time for me to appear before the king, I can die. But he said, if I die, I die. I will take the step of faith and go and let me die. And he didn't die. The four lepers, if we live here, we will die. We, but if we go forward, we will die. We will go forward. They went forward and they did not die. Anytime you take that step of faith and believe God's word, God will sustain you. If your faith say yes, God will never say no. Are you hearing me? We have examples, examples in the Bible who took that step of faith. Yes, and that is what God has called us. Let us walk and live by faith. And we will see the hand of God upon our life. God bless each one of you. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit will help us. That any time we open the pages of scriptures, may faith be born out of the scriptures. Lord, do a new work of grace in each one of us, our life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.